Greetings to all my viewers. I'm Peter John Hoyeman coming from the channel Nganyezi Visuals. We're here at Lifetime Gym in Kimberley in the Northern Cape. And with me, I've got a childhood friend of mine, a brother of mine, Musa Ntangula. Uh, I just want to hear him out today. He's in fact preparing, I think it's seven days or less before a big fight of his taking place in Mangaung. And uh, I'm just going to be asking him a bit about his preparation, a bit about his background, and uh, yeah, just giving him a platform to, to show off his talent. Musa, welcome. Thank you so much. Uh, firstly, tell us about yourself. Where did you grow up? Give us a bit more about, about your background. Um, I'm originally from Kimberley, born, yeah. born and raised. Um, I did my schooling for a quarter of my life in Mangaung, Free State. And then I moved back to Kimberley to complete my schooling. And then ever since I've been, I've been at home. Um, I started boxing when I was 16 years old. Um, How old are you now? I am currently 24, turning 25 on the 9th of May. So okay. it's exactly a week after my fight. You know? So it's a, it's an awesome birthday present, yes, if yes. I put it that way. Because like I told you earlier on before, I've been waiting two years for this opportunity. Uh, since I turned professional and it's finally here, so I'm grabbing it with both of my hands and yeah, nothing's wow. gonna stand in my, in my way. Congrats, congrats. So why boxing specifically? You know, I've tried a fair share of all the sports, let me say, but not everything as in everything, but I've, ha I've done swimming, it wasn't my thing. I played hockey, I also didn't enjoy it that much. I tried tennis, I wasn't patient enough. <laughs> Cricket, the same thing, you know, standing in the sun, that, that was a big issue for me. <laughs> um, I played squash, I enjoyed it, but, you know, um, yeah, man, it didn't give me that, uh, you know what I rugby? mean? Rugby? I'm getting to the yeah, rugby part, yeah. you know. Uh, then I tried then I tried soccer, I played soccer, then, you know, um, soccer for me, uh, I was never really good at it, so I also didn't enjoy that much because I wasn't good at it. Um, then I tried out rugby, rugby, which I happened to be good at because it was like, you know, contact sport and I enjoyed contact sports, you know, and yeah, I excelled. I, did, I played rugby for three years from uh, grade seven to grade nine up until I moved back to Kimberley. I enjoyed it. And then as soon as I moved to Kimberley, I did not play sport again for like a year or so up until I turned 16. Then I decided, you know, I'm going to join boxing. And the crazy thing is the neighborhood that I stay in. The boxing club <clears throat> was a few meters away and okay. I never knew that there was a boxing club there. So the time I started boxing, I was like, man, I can't believe this place was here the entire time. Why didn't I start earlier? Sure. You know, so yeah, that's why I chose boxing. I chose boxing because, you know, the contact, the adrenaline that it gave me and, you mm. know, it was a way for me to, how can I say, release, um, a certain amount of energy that was building up in me so you know there was there was there was very there was there was a good way for me to you know divert from you know the uh, the wrong crowd you know people are going to lead me in the wrong direction so that's why i stuck with boxing because it brought a, a, a large aspect of discipline in my life okay. you know so yeah that's why that's that's why I stuck with it. Do you have any background in other martial arts like karate, for instance? Yes, yes, I forgot to mention that. Yeah, sure. um, my mother put me and my brother in karate when we, I was about eight years old and my brother was about 10. We just freshly did move to uh, Mangaung, to Free State Bloemfontein. And yeah, we did karate also for a couple of years, three years, three years. I did it for three years and my brother, he, he did karate for a bit longer. So I do have background in in other combat sport and let's say about last year i also tried out jujitsu mm -hmm. you know so yeah I, I like i like i like combat sports so yeah does that mean you'd consider going the mma direction i've thought about it once or twice mm -hmm. but you know one thing that scares me the most is 
the elbows, there's no padding around elbows. And yeah. I love my face. I love my appearance. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't want to, you know, end up like, a, I don't want to look like a punching bag. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, you've got this fight coming up. Which division are you fighting in? I'm going to be participating and fighting in the junior flyweight division. That is the 48.9999 limit. Okay. I cannot be heavier than that. I can't weigh in at 49. I must be lower than 49. Wow. 48.9999. So my walk around weight is about 56. Yeah. You know, so I already, I, I already cut six kilograms this past three weeks, but I've been doing it slowly because yeah. I don't want to lose too much strength while I'm doing it, you know, so. Um, I'm left with my last three kilograms, so I'm doing it nice and slowly. So, yeah, I'm still nice and strong by the time I have to compete. So why that category specifically? Um, the reason why I chose to fight at my lowest weight is because my, uh, my age still allows me to. My met metabolism is slowing down and I would love to be a multiple division champion. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be a champion of one division and just stay in that division. So as my body is growing and as, as I'm also maturing, I would like to start from the lowest weight that my body can go. And while I grow with the sport and my body grows yeah. too, yeah. I can achieve the goal that I have set. Okay. How far do you want to take boxing? Where, where do you see yourself in the next five or so years, knowing that sports has a bit of a, you know, you have a limited career, um, injuries come and you've got to consider your age as well. So where, where do you see yourself going? In the next five years, I see myself as an All-African champion. Okay. Wow. I aim to be world champion, um, God willingly, sure. God willingly. Um, knowing that there hasn't been many champions from uh, the Northern Cape, Kimberley too. Um, I know on an amateur level, we've produced great champions, but in the professional professional realm, uh, there has been a couple of boxers that have been uh, professional, uh, that, that push for pros, but I'm not sure about them, you know, winning any belts. Uh, um, I haven't done any history on that, but to my knowledge, I don't know of any boxer from the Northern Cape being, you know, a world champion or an all African champion. So, you know, I plan to, to break that wall and, you know, uh, show the cats from where we come mm -hmm. from that, you know, they also can do it. And sure. no matter the background, no matter where we come from, you know, we always look down and we frowned upon because, you know, Northern Cape Kimberley, you know, we, there's always that stigma of, ah, this place, the people of this place, you know. So I'm just trying to shift that whole entire mindset, yeah. you know, especially sports of boxing, you know, everybody looks at boxing as, now nah, you have to be a person who loves violence, you know, yeah. to, to, to do boxing. So I'm just trying to shift that whole mentality and so people can see the beauty in the sport. Sure. It's not the art of you going to go, of walking outside of the boxing club to go beat somebody up, no. It is the art of self-defense, sure. you know, and beyond the self-defense, it teaches you self-discipline and also brings out confidence. And a lot of our youth, we are depressed. Mm. We are depressed and we don't want to admit it. So I just feel that this sport is going to help a lot of people, especially people our age and even younger, yeah. you know, because yeah. the way it helped me, I'm sure it's going to impact a lot of people's lives, you know. Sure. Because people only focus on soccer, cricket, and rugby, you know? And there's also a lot of other sports where we can make a big difference. Yeah, yeah. Talking about Kimberley specifically, I remember when Wambushi, uh, for those who don't know, he was uh, the number one supporter for the Cricol and West uh, rugby team, the men's team. Um, when he passed away, you gave quite a moving tribute uh, what role did he play in your life or in other boxers' lives that made you, you know, look up to him and, and give him the honor that you did? Oh, um, Bushi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there was, there, was, there was a character, a lovely, lovely spirit, a lovely soul. Sure. Uh, when I first started boxing, um, the night that I went there, Ombushi um, happened to be there. So uh, my first class, Ombushi um, showed me how to stand, how to throw the jab, how to throw the right. And he always had a thing of, fully or a fully or yeah. so basically like your guards must be up the yeah. whole time so whenever you drop it will be like fully or and he had this thing of always being random on bushy like when he walks up to you, he's like hey yeah your god <laughs> you know what i mean so sure. like you, you that's just the person that he was and yeah. at his age you are still passionate and you know um one thing that i love the most is that he was still on his feet yeah he was you would never find him down on Bushi, no matter if he could be sick or whatever. He's always on his feet and not walking slow. Remember, bear in mind, on Bushi is a is an old fella. Yeah. You know, he was still uh, boxing when they were earning pounds and shillings. Yes. You know what I mean? So um, he, the fact that he was still on his feet and he was still able to speak, no slurred speech and everything, 
you know, I really looked up to him and what he achieved also, like, he went to go represent uh, South Africa at the Helsinki Games, I think it was 19, 19, 1940, around about those times. I'm not ex sure exactly when, but yeah, he did that. And, you know, we always looked up to that. The the owner of the club, we always mentioned, you know, uh, um, Ombushi and what he did uh, for boxing, you know, especially like in the town side, you know, but you know, we were segregated apart. So yeah. like um, there was also a lot of other people, especially Freedom Boxing Club and uh, Home Defenders. They're also one of the longest standing boxing clubs in Kimberley up until this time. So there's also a lot of other coaches too that have, you know, impacted people's lives on a on a great way. But for me, the reason why I paid that tribute on, on Bushi is because the way he impacted me, you know. So, nice, nice. Yeah. Now tell me, in terms of the image that you mentioned um, around the sport or the perception around boxing, yeah. um, do you think that the recent fights that Casper Nyovest and, you know, the likes of Nark Music have had, uh, do you think this shines a positive light on the sport? Is it something you encourage to to take place more often, especially with celebrities? No, definitely, definitely. Look, um, I give big, big ups to anybody that has the guts to step into the square circle. It, no matter it being just uh, a celebrity boxing match or something just for fun, you will feel your heart beat, yeah. you know, because throwing hands is no child's play. Uh, you can get seriously injured. You know, yeah. That's something that you must always consider. And it being a good thing for boxing, definitely. Uh, it brought boxing on a bigger platform, especially in South Africa. You know, uh, there was a time when boxing was highly supported mm -hmm. uh, back in the 90s with Baby Jake Matala. Yeah. You know, uh, so I think that if that has to take part on a larger scale, every four months or three months where all the big names, they come together, it's gonna bring the spotlight back on boxing. And not only in a manner of where, oh no, I have a problem with you, no, let's step to the ring and beat each other's brains out. No, yeah. they're going to appreciate the sport because I remember there was one post that Casper Nyovest made, was um, the hard work and the dedication and discipline that it took him yeah. just to go to the gym and to prepare for the fight. Yeah. It showed him a whole nother perspective on boxing and yeah. he gave his utmost respect to boxers yeah. and they will always be that one fan that is going to spark I admit not everyone is going to get the message but if one person can get the message that's all that matters so how do you I mean there's a raging debate around gender right and how we can stem the tide of what is called gender-based violence right there are proponents of teaching boys to be more effeminate others would argue um, and others say that perhaps bringing boys into spaces like this would actually give them the necessary discipline to resolve their inner conflict um, and change the way they look at the world, therefore using their masculinity, their strength in a positive way to protect their families, to protect their communities. Are you for that argument or do you think uh, it, it, it could have a negative role? I don't really think that it could have a negative role. Um, it's the same thing. Look, it depends also on how is your coach. Like I always make this example. People always say pit bulls are violent dogs. Mm. No, it's the owner. How you train the dog. Mm. So if your coach is not going to uh, go out of his way to make sure uh, your inner conflicts and not only focus on the skill that you bring to the gym, you must understand a coach is more like also a psychologist, a father, a, a, a mentor. You understand? So they have to also invest their time to find the problem. Mm -hmm. You understand? So if our coaches are going to be like that, 100% sure I'm rooting for that. I was fortunate enough, enough to have a coach that, that went, you know, beyond his means to make sure that no, emotionally I'm okay. Mentally I'm okay. You know what I mean? Um, so if we can just stick to that way and push that consistently and make sure that the kids who are coming to the boxing clubs, we make sure we're also involved in their school life. Are they doing their homework? Are they, re are they listening to their parents at home? Yeah. You know, so if the coaches can push that and push that, um, how can I say, energy, yeah. definitely we're not gonna have a problem in the gender-based violence, with gender-based violence. Sure. But exactly like I say, everything stems from at home. Yeah. So there always has to be somebody who's looking from without because us, in the in 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 the toxic environment or within the problem, we can't see the problem. Yeah. The person from outside is gonna see the problem. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. So 
me saying the coach as a psychologist, the psychologist is always the mediator, yeah. you understand? So he will be able to tell the parents this is the problem, mm-hmm. you understand? And you also be able to pick up the parents' problem and be like, the son is feeling this way. Mm-hmm. Okay, you also feeling this way. Okay. This is what I'm going to do to try and alleviate the stress and all the conflict in the house. So definitely that, that, that way of um, feeling that uh, men must be a bit more feminine, I uh, don't believe in that. Sure. Yeah, okay, we must be a bit more sensitive because there's a whole stigma of, you know, we have to be macho men. We yeah. cannot um, express our emotions, otherwise we're seen as weak. Yeah. That has to go, yeah. you know, and that's why we are dealing with suicides sure. today sure. because we bottle everything up. And that's why we're angry, mm. you know? Mm. And that's why we just lash out at any mm. small thing, mm. you know? And mm. people will think that small thing is the problem. No, it was just the trigger. Yeah. Look deeper. Yeah. But that time is too late. Yeah. We're already hanging. Yeah. The bucket is kicked, yeah. you know? Mm. So as soon as we can just get out of that whole mentality of do not show your emotions, you know? Express your emotions. So this will be very personal. Um, both of us were raised by our mothers, right? And we've both had the difficulty, the challenges of coming to terms with that kind of pain. Yeah. And I've seen your transformation from when we were young boys and you've seen mine. I just want to know how much of a role boxing specifically played in you positively using that uh, fighting spirit you have in you. Um, and, and channeling that to become this disciplined uh, young man that you are, that is, you know, forward thinking and that's a visionary today. Boxing played a major impact. I, <laughs> I was going off the rails of, uh, um, I was going off the rails, you know, I was moved by my anger, you know, mm. but that anger of, you know, resentment, of being resented and feeling unwanted, mm. you know, and, that's, that's, that's the thing that absent fathers don't see, you know, the impact that it has on the kids' mental health. Because you will always have this low self-esteem of rejection, you know, you will always fear rejection. And um, that, that had a large role to play with also my impulsiveness, you know, growing up and, you know, my anger problems. You know, so boxing really helped me to control my emotions. And it helped me also, uh, 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 they say they say in Afrikaans, I say, many laser, you many fell laser. Yeah. There was a time when I got angry in a match. Yeah. There. I threw my whole game away. I lost the fight on points. Yeah. And there was a lesson. Mm. You have to stay calm at all times. Yeah. Why? If you're calm, you're able to pick up the problem and you're able to find the solution. Mm. You know, so that's why I always recommend boxing because you regulate your emotions. You have to be the master of your mind and your emotions and your body, of course. But yeah, that's why I always recommend boxing as a sport. And that's why also with gender-based violence, ladies, join a boxing club. Mm. Join a boxing club. I'm not condoning violence, yeah. but sometimes you, you, you will need to stand up for yourself. Yeah. So if you are going to throw some pepper on the guy's nose, he is going to step back and be like, shock. He's not going to fight you back. Yeah. Because people prey on the weak. You've got a daughter. Um, it's often said that daughters melt their father's hearts. Has, <laughs> has she done that? And has she also contributed to you just saying, you know what, I'm the one that's going to turn the page and I'm not going to uh, pass down, you know, whatever pain I felt, but I'm going to be there. And I see you, you're involved. You, you know, you play a significant role in her life. Did she further melt your heart? No, definitely, definitely she did. Um, my daughter, I can, I can say that she really, I had a heart on the heart, you know, uh, due to the experiences that I've been through in my life. But, you know, since her birth, my brother, you know, <laughs> uh, my heart just opened up, you know. Um, I feel that I'm more, I'm, I'm more open, you know, to, to, to experiencing love, hmm. you know. Um, love that, I was always uh, expecting to get from my father. Sure. You understand? Um, like I mentioned before, the root of all uh, of my impulsiveness and the anger that I was battling was because, was rooted in the abandonment issues that I had of my yes. father. You know, so that was a pain that I didn't want my daughter ever to feel in her life. Sure. Like despite 
me and a mother not being together or us being together. I do not want her to ever feel that way towards me or her mother because that is not a nice pain. Yeah. And you know, mentally, it that's what that's why our youth is messed up like how it is now. Mm. You know, because of all the pain that our parents don't see that they've caused us. I'm not saying that you know uh, parents are perfect and whatnot and all that, but um, we have to also acknowledge our wrongdoings as parents. And you know, me myself, learning from the mistakes that my father has made with me, I do not want to do that with my daughter. So tell me, who's your role model? in the boxing space. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, we can go back. I have a lot of role models, yeah. a lot of role models, but we can start off with uh, Iron Mike Tyson. You know, sure. I love his explosiveness, mm -hmm. his movements, but the Mike Tyson with the jab, yeah. not the Mike Tyson that just wanted to knock you out, the Mike Tyson that had the jab, sure. you know, that's the Mike Tyson I love. Uh, Sugar Ray Leonard, oh, Sugar Ray Leonard. I love Sugar Ray Leonard. I look up to him. I love his footwork, his movement, his confidence. You know what I mean? The energy that he brings. Um, not many people know this, uh, but he is the goat of boxing. Sugar Ray Robinson. He, man, 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 man. I should have added him number one on the list. That's <laughs> sure. who I look up to the most, Sugar Ray Robinson. Then obviously it comes to Muhammad Ali. Then is the uh, Floyd Mayweather you know, uh, Manny Pacquiao, and then um, from South Africa, Heki Butler, um, uh, Murutum Talani, you know. Okay. I just hope that he doesn't retire before, you know, I get the opportunity to fight him because he's in my weight division or a weight division higher than me. And, you know, I've always wanted to fight him. Yeah. Heki Butler, like I mentioned, mm -hmm. him too. He is in the current weight that I'm in. I would definitely love to fight him. Heki, if you watch this, in the near future, just know, man, give me opportunity. I gotta, I gotta take Heki Butler, you know. Um, the reason being is um, his movement. I think that, you know, fighting him is gonna make me a better boxer and beating him. He has achieved so much, sure. especially uh, being in the weight division that we're in is very difficult, mm -hmm. you know. Um, there's a lot of competition out there, you know, and I think he made Ring Magazine, the first only in South Africa to make the Ring Magazine. He was also a multiple division weight, uh, uh, well, multiple division weight uh, champion. Sure. I think two two division champion, and yeah, oh, and wow. he's also achieved a lot also in the amateur in the amateur rank. So Heggy Butler, big props to what he's done. Uh, that's 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 who I look up to in boxing. Did I mention Did I mention Joe Frazier, Smoking Joe Frazier? You didn't. You didn't. Smoking <laughs> Joe too. Sure, sure, yeah, sure. Yeah, Smoking sure. Joe, him sure. too. Yeah. Now you've mentioned uh, a wide range of names and some of these guys played a political role as well. You know, thinking about Muhammad Ali, very outspoken, you know, refused to be drafted into the American military. A lot of these guys were very conscious, you know, at a time when it wasn't necessarily fashionable as yeah. it is now. Um, how then do you see yourself playing that kind of social role? in a place like Kimberley, you know, one of the smaller, somewhat forgotten cities with huge social ills um, that still, you know, pervade the space. How, how are you going to play an active role, maybe using your boxing um, to make a difference in Kimberley and the Northern Cape? As, as I've mentioned earlier on, you know, um, what I want to achieve and me breaking the wall for uh, kids from the Northern Cape uh, mm. to also see that they have the ability and that they can, you know, do it too, if they just set their mind to it. The way I want to help the youth is exactly in that manner, you know, bring them in by sport, you know. Uh, we are very still, how can I say, <clears throat> fighting amongst each other, yeah. you know, and yeah, it sounds like a contradiction because boxing, literally you're fighting against the other people, but okay. it's crazy how after you have a match with this person, how you guys are going to end up being the best of friends. Yeah. You know, um, not only with boxing, but I'm just trying to show that the uh, bring uh, bring the youth and and show people that sport is important. Sport is always overlooked. People are always saying, "No, uh, go be an engineer or whatever, whatever." But you must remember, sport um, teaches you. It breeds confidence. Mm -hmm. You know, it helps you with your self self esteem. Mm -hmm. It helps you with your discipline. Mm -hmm. You understand, and all of that is going to impact your career as an engineer. Sure. You know, it doesn't help you going to be an ill-disciplined engineer, going drunk, you come build a structure that's going to collapse. Sure. You understand? So that's, 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 that's the impact. The impact I want to make is that I want to show 
uh, the kids that they also have other options sure you know that they can also make a difference in sports you know um there's a lot of talent from the northern cape that's been overlooked on and a lot of people didn't make it so you know me breaking the barrier i just feel that is going to help a lot of people you know and not only in the sports side like i want to also help uh, the kids that have also been going through the same th- same thing as me you know especially um the juvenile delinquents they they are a bunch of angry misfits you know boxing is going to calm them down you know and also you know teach them what i learned in my life i'm still learning i'm still i'm still young as i like to see it yeah. you know so the experiences that i'm still going to experience i like to pass them down and prevent them from making the same mistakes yeah shab they have already made mistakes but guidance will always go so far you know sure. who are you fighting next week some guy called mandra nkele um he's a ghost <laughs> <laughs> i've tried searching him on facebook instagram but i don't find anything on him mm-hmm. so it's it's quite overwhelming you know because i don't know what's what's going to stand in front of me but like i mentioned i'm not going to let anything stand in my way from achieving what i want to achieve um i'm not going to overlook the guy obviously um, i'm expecting the best he comes from gauteng gauteng is very good fighters um but at least from an amateur background we didn't know who we were going to fight so yeah. it's not a new thing to me yeah yeah but do you think you you get over the line you'll no. be victorious no i know i'm going to be victorious sure. um the work that i've put in you know um i am Um I've had my visions about this a couple of times mm-hmm. like even when I'm just even at work and I think about the fight I see the punch that I'm going to land that's going to drop him sure. I see myself throwing my hands sure. up in the air you know I see myself winning but I'm not focused too much on the outcome I'm focused on what I need to do to get to the outcome you know any knockouts The knockout is the bonus. I want yeah. to showcase my talent and my skill that we've mm-hmm. been working on. I've been working with coach Tabo Mkila. Okay. You know, he's one of the, you know, uh he, he pushed he pushed amateur like I remember starting boxing, you know, uh as guys we all used to watch their fights. You know the grown-ups like he's, he's they like the OGs. Yeah. You know, yeah. like hey man, we all used to enjoy their fights and you know, I'm blessed with the privilege of um working with him and also uh coach Paul Kasimba, okay. the owner of the gym, he's also been helping me tremendously. He opened up his doors for me 2 years ago when the gym was just across the road uh by Sweet Science, you know, Sweet Science, yes, you yes, know, yes. and you know, I've been working with them. There was just obviously with COVID and the gym closed down and all that. I went solo, but now the gym is open with back. Um coach Tabo Mkila has been working with me the same as coach Paul and you know, everything has been going well. Um I feel like a different boxer to the one that I was uh two months ago. Sure. You know, sure. um my movement, my style. Um yesterday I had a bag session, you know, um late at night at about past 7. Mm-hmm. And I felt different, man, you know. Mm-hmm. I felt good, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. I didn't feel like that same old box. I felt like there's a change and what well, change means good, you know. Sure. Whenever a new season comes, sure. something is going to sprout out of the soil, you know. Definitely. And this is not winter. Yeah. This season of mine, no, it's summer. Mm. It's summer is time is time is time <laughs> to eat the fruits of the labor. Sure. You know, uh, we've been in winter for the past two years, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um this past couple of weeks has been spring. you know mm-hmm. what's what's of the spring it's summer <laughs> ain't it it's summer now it's time sure. to eat sure. it's time sure. to eat what is your what is your routine look like um an ordinary day or if you can break it down for us you know over a seven day period what does that look like well because i'm working at nine to five yeah. um i make sure that after work i at least put in an hour and a half here in the gym yeah um on a weekend mm-hmm. uh the, when i knock off early i make sure that at least Saturday I run at least 10 k's but whenever I'm off or whenever I can I put in my road work and I come to the gym so at least it's two sessions in a day that I do so yeah that's 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 more or less my routine um I don't like to exactly like break down exactly what I do inside sure, sure. because you that's know a, it's, it's a secret it's, yeah, it's a secret, secret yeah. but you know a bit of bag work a bit of skipping a bit of skills a bit of head movement defense and sparring sure you know so sure. yeah that's my routine every day um every day is a sunday off sure musa if there's one last thing i would like you to tell us is what would you tell your younger self especially in relation to where the world is now maybe that could be 
a message of hope or inspiration for young people. And then you in 40 years, looking back at this interview, what will that, what would you say to that old man <laughs> looking back at this? Use, use Musa, Musa. <laughs> Use every opportunity that you have in front of you. Mm. Do not check, ah, tomorrow. Mm. Do it now. Mm. Do what you have to do. Do it now. Don't wait for tomorrow. And one last thing, don't ever doubt yourself, my boy. Sure. Because a lot of people, they see a light and you still doubt yourself. Just check your low self-esteem and believe in yourself a bit more. I'll see you in 40 years, my boy. Musa, thank you so much for your time, for allowing us into your sacred space. And uh, I think it was good talking to you. I hope you do well next week. I hope you come out on top. And uh, hopefully in the future, I, I can be ringside watching one of your fights. But you're doing amazing work. I see you posting every day. It always inspires me to get back into shape, get back into the dojo as well. <laughs> And uh, you're doing fantastic works and just keep it up, my brother. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you for coming through. Man, it's been a blessing. Uh, shout out to everybody that's going to be watching this. Shout out to my coaches. Shout out to my future sponsors. Shout out to my daughter, Leah. I love you. Shout out to my moms. Shout out to everybody who's ever, always believed in me. And shout out to me, man. Shout out to me for always showing up. Shout out to God, you know, sure, for, sure, always, sure. for always giving me the strength when I needed it. And one last shout out. My brother, thank you so much, my man, for your friendship, for your brotherhood, for being the bigger brother that you've always been, you know, giving me the advice when I always needed you. Sure. I'll always appreciate you and thank you for coming through. Much appreciated. Thanks, bro. Thank you. Okay, guys, uh, that's the end of our segment uh, with Musan Tlangula. Just uh, catching up with an old friend of mine, a brother childhood friend I grew up with and I'm hoping to interview more young people in Kimberley in the Northern Cape specifically doing good things doing positive things doing amazing things and like he said just to lift the self-esteem up uh, of the general uh, youth and maybe you know one of these stories can inspire them and uh, reaching out to us connecting with us and learning from us there's so much information to share contacts knowledge wisdom and uh, I think all we can do is just to pay it forward every time we are blessed to have opportunities ourselves. Thank you. <laughs>